Welcome to Debating Dating, a podcast with me, Mark Jennings. And me, Rachel Graham. We are two single friends, and every episode we'll be discussing our differing perspectives on an aspect of modern dating. We'll be sharing our honest insights and experiences as platonic pals who are not afraid to give each other the unvarnished truth. Or laugh at each other's bullshit. So this episode, we're going to be chatting about bad dates. So we were kind of chatting before about if we could remember our bad dates and our worst dates. And we were kind of chatting about how we think that we've kind of started to forget them because you pushed them out of your mind. And banished them <laughs> to the nether regions of my the mind. Nether you know, regions? <laughs> to the to the the very back end of uh, of my memories, you know. We've been dredging it back up. <laughs> I know. I do think that is probably quite a healthy way to do it, to be honest. Like if you you know, you don't want to dwell on them too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, and I think a lot of the times bad dates are, are forgettable ones. Well, you hope anyway, you know. But yeah, um, yeah I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to think. But then you start, uh, the other thing is me and you have been on, you know, quite, quite a lot quite of a dates. <laughs> I think considerably more than the average person. So, Maybe. you know, at a certain point, you know, they all just kind of blur in. So, but when you start thinking back, you do go, oh, hi, there was that time that that mad thing happened or whatever. So, um, yeah, so I think that there is plenty to talk about, but it's funny how you, you know, there is, it's hard to kind of think of the exact ones that, that, you know, something has happened. But of course, obviously, we have both had um, weird experiences in dating. Yeah, yeah. It's um it is funny as well because for the most part, the ones that are forgettable is just when they're boring or if there maybe isn't a spark or you're not really into it. But then some crazy things happen and they do stick out and you're like, Oh my god, I can't believe that actually Because people are weird. Like we're all we've all got weirdness and I think when you add nerves into the equation, it kinda makes it even worse. Like sometimes when you're chatting and you're nervous things come out your mouth that you don't even mean and you don't really even think about but it's because you don't want to have like the gap in silence I don't know if that's my experience but anyway I think first dates are are more likely to be the worst dates as well because for there to be a second date the first date has to have been all right at least do you know what I mean so I think the amount of dates that are weird or bad or whatever it's the first one that's going to be weird in it yeah, totally. So I'm looking forward to how uh, how many absolute weird stories we... Because I don't think we always tell each other the bad ones. I think sometimes if we're excited and we want to know about, like, whether we should pursue something, we would kind of tell them that. But, like, sometimes I think that I don't always tell you because I'm like, oh, God, I don't even want to, like, give that any more airtime in my brain. Which is annoying because all I want to hear is the bad ones. <laughs> You don't want to I hear the good ones ever. I could not give a fuck about your good dates. I only <laughs> want to hear about the ones that went terribly wrong. And I think it's the same for, for everybody, really. <laughs> yeah. um, but we've got four submissions from the audience, from listeners, who uh, share their experiences of the worst dates and were joined by our guest comedian Rob Mulholland as well to chip in with his own stories and reactions to the submissions as well. So, without further ado, let's get chatting about worst dates. So, this week we're joined by comedian Rob Mulholland. Rob, thanks for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hello, welcome. Basically a year since lockdown has been... How has it been for you in terms of the... The dating world. What's your situation? Well, I am I am locked down in a long term relationship. I'm all right. <laughs> like I uh, I feel like you know I feel like it's the time when finally being in a long term relationship's definitely been the right call over this. It's been great. Like I have had it as about as good as you can get a lockdown. I think it's been terrible and I've hated every second of it. But like I've got you know a pretty good lifestyle for it. I feel for single people through this. Although, hold on. The golden age is coming, right? There is going to be a golden age of shagging, and I'm genuinely jealous of like single people in a couple of months' time. It's going to be Armageddon. We're counting down the days, definitely. I've like yeah. that with my calendar crossing it off, <laughs> like a prisoner marking on the walls, Just tallying like, that up. Yeah. It is interesting because, like, because I was in a relationship at the start of lockdown, although I kind of just got into the relationship at the start of lockdown. So it was that thing of like, right. 
you know, we either do this or it's like, you know, or just I'm single for this indefinite mm-hmm. period of time. So it's like, yeah, I'll go with the relationship. And um, and then I've been single for a couple of months now. It's, it's been weird seeing it from both situations. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's just such an odd time, man. But it was weird kind of coming out right in the middle and like being like, oh, I'm single now. What the fuck do I do? And I was like, totally behind what the fucking protocol was and stuff and you need to start oh, it's, it's bad enough just starting for scratch as it is and then you need to do you need the to social actually listen to the announcements from Nicola Sturgeon of being like are we allowed are we allowed <laughs> if you're actually watching the news and caring what, what's actually the rules oh it's know, a man. grim state of affairs yeah. <laughs> it must have been dead hard like genuinely like I've thought about it like you know like you guys like do, so have you, have you been on dates or have you been like yeah, too How's many, that been right? too many outside dates. I like feel like I'm like I like know the warmest coat and I know <laughs> like whether to bring an umbrella or not. Like just proper checking the weather. Um, it's really like it is just hard because actually I went on a date last night, a uh, an outside date, and I'm going on a second date, and it's kind of like how many outside walking dates can you do? How many like laps of the park can you actually do? And then it's gonna get to a point where you're like. There's there's nowhere to go, so there's a bottleneck, really isn't there? There's like yeah. a bottleneck of like where like you know you can't even move to the next level unless you decide to just fucking move in with somebody. Bubble basically. up, <laughs> or you know maybe we bring back fingering in bushes, right? That's been. I mean, it's definitely an option. Just saying, it, I'm, an, I'm an old school romantic, you know. It's, it's hard to stay six feet apart and do that, though, Rob. No, everybody's as tall as you. Yeah, listen, I'm six foot seven, man. I'm fine. Like these spaghetti <laughs> arms. I'll social distance all day. I'm all right. <laughs> oh my god, you're six foot seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I am. I picture Peter Crouch. That is my exact build. <laughs> Like genuinely, I'm the same height was. and stuff. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> he's a bit, he's in a bit more, uh, he's in a bit better shape than me. I don't think he's got the little chubby tits I've grown over lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever put, did, see if, when you were single? Did you ever like, put that on like a dating profile or anything, oh, That you were, yeah. Like I like lead with that. Like don't you? Like my my dating profile was like six foot. Seven. If I could have had it in neon letters. <laughs> at the top. I know you what... should put that behind you now instead of that <laughs> fuck off. So. I'm, I'm six foot seven. Uh, it, it's you know I know what I offer to the dating market. It's tall and funny. So like my yeah. the first bit of my bio is just six foot seven professional comedian. Done. Nailed that, it. That that's a good start. Although to be fair, for a while on Tinder it did just say drunk slag seeks similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, do you, so uh, there must be like this is a bit I've been wondering about being single and going on like dates over lockdown. There must uh-huh. be a bit where you're like you want to kiss, and like that is like a thing to negotiate because maybe one of you is like more nervous about the virus than someone else. There's a whole like other layer of etiquette to it, and how do you even have those little moments of contact that sort of you know build the frisson? Is that the word? Yeah. I don't know. That's the type of dog. <laughs> I was trying to sound fancy, but like, you know what I mean? Like when you sort of build the tension like that, how does that work? Does it? Well, the, the kiss, the kiss is such a thing for me that I always am like, well, if they're into me, they'll kiss me at the end, and if they're not into me, they won't kiss me at the end. And then when you don't have a kiss at the end, you're like, I honestly do not know whether they liked me or not. There's no like touching hands and all that kind of stuff, and it does mean that you have to just wait until the next day and see if they will text you. And yeah. it is that thing of like, I think I can pick up on signals quite well, but actually the biggest signal is a big kiss at the end. And if it doesn't happen, I'm like, I don't know. You're taking it as a personal slight because they're trying to <laughs> fucking stay safe in a pandemic. <laughs> I can't believe him. I thought he liked me. Do you not like me more than your grandma? Come on. Involved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean though, but I, I always thought that. But I think like... I, Dating changed, I think, at some point. I always used to think, you know, the kiss at the end was sort of like the marker. But mm-hmm. then I, when I was like single a couple of years ago, it was in like the full-on modern Tinder meat market like age of mm-hmm. dating. And like I would go out with girls and then we'd kiss at the end and I'd be like, fuck it, you know, a little skip in my walk on the way home. <laughs> then ghosted. That had happened fairly Ooh. frequently. So I think, um, I think the value of the kiss has gone down prior to this. But because of the pandemic skyrocketed again now that now if someone goes for the kiss they are endangering their family for you come on <laughs> that's that's yeah, good a, you know if you go for the kiss now you're like well we might as well shag now that we've broke the rules <laughs> 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 it's 
it's like you know that way when you're on a diet and then you like have a wee bit of chocolate and you go oh, I might as well fucking fuck Finish it now and have yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> So obviously this week we're, we're talking about bad dates. We've got four submissions. And so this first one pretty much is, you know, about as off the rails and, and bad as, as you could really expect a date to go. So I went on a date with a guy um, into a nightclub. A fight broke out and uh, he got bottled over the, the head. Um, we went to the hospital and then he phoned his girlfriend to come pick him up. Then, awkwardly, a few weeks later, uh, I got a phone call from the CID um, to come in that were investigating the fight, and I had to relay the whole embarrassing story over again. Uh, I mean, look, I don't look, I don't mean to cast aspersions, but that is the most Scottish story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad because I listened to it and I was like, oh, I, I've had a similar experience to that. <laughs> It's like, if, if he doesn't get bottled on the first date, does he even really like you? <laughs> <laughs> but there was it's two the... levels to that, because it was like, bottled, but also that he also had a girlfriend. And that, what yeah. a way to find out. Like, actually being like, oh, I obviously had to go to the hospital and care for this person that I don't really know. Oh, it's okay, the girlfriend's here, I'll step back now, it's cool. Yeah, there's a whole layer, there's layers and layers of madness. There's one before that that freaked me out was going on a date in a nightclub. Yeah. That is weird. Who's going clubbing for a date? Like, you, you go clubbing for one night stands. You don't go for, like, a date. Do you want to go, oh, do you want to go down, you know, like, stinky moes and have a dance? <laughs> like, what are you on about? Yeah. You're so right, man. Like, cause that's it. Like, nightclubs, they're basically for single people or like maybe groups of mates, right? And then, yeah. so maybe if you've got your girlfriend and you, you are all part of one group of pals, you'd all going a big night out. Or you go if you're single and you're out with your mates and you're, you're trying to pull or whatever. But I, a nightclub is no place for a, a fucking date, especially like a first date. I think if I went into a nightclub, I would see a lot more people that I would want to be with and you'd be like, oh fuck, I need, I've, I've made my bed, I need to lie in it and stay on this weird date. That is might a be potential. Hot about. People are dressed up, looking good. You, you can get overshadowed in a nightclub. That is fair. And you might lose the person. Someone else might go and chat them up and then, you know, they're more interested than that person and, and you lose them. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. actually just lose them because they're big, big nightclubs. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, Some of them are well. like mazes, aren't they? They are like mazes. <laughs> but this to you, Rachel, right? Would it be, would it make any difference to you if on a date a guy got bottled or did the bottling? Is it is it equally bad? <laughs> or is if someone, because if they win the fight, is that not a bit better at least? Um, <laughs> I think I would definitely rather they got bottled. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I would rather they got bottled because I would like to think that that was Tips for anyone first. who wants to go on a date with Rachel Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Stage your own fucking I don't want to be with someone attack. who bottles someone. But, right, but what I if they started the fight from... and then got bottled? Oh. Yeah. So they've just lost the fight. That's all they've done. I would like them to win the fight. Actually, this is terrible. This sounds really bad. But I heard of someone who had, like, got into a big fight and I was like, ooh, that's that's quite sexy. And then I was like, that's terrible. That's not actually what I want my brain to think. But they won it. And I was like, oh, but they were strong and their arms yeah, did you can't good. control stuff like that though there's loads yeah. of stuff where you're like ah oh, i wish i wasn't i wish i didn't find that attractive but like, <laughs> no, you know but... i think that that's one of the ones that women have it's just in you somewhere deep within instinctive isn't it yeah because... and i would like to think on paper that i'm like i want someone really sensitive and caring and thoughtful but actually you would like them to at least if you were in that situation to just because it also it is embarrassing. It's like that kind of Bridget Jones, like two men fighting is embarrassing in itself. Especially because I would imagine a lot of people aren't very good at fighting because how and often most in your life are terrible, do you yeah. fight? Yeah, so it is like a ready in itself. And then you have to be like, okay, well, I didn't really want this situation, but I hope that they won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it make a difference to you, Rob, if you're in a date with a girl and <laughs> whether she got bottled or was a bottler? <laughs> Well, I if she, like to be honest, like yeah, like if if I was out on a date with a girl who bottled someone, look, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'd, I'd, I'd look, I probably wouldn't go out with her again, but I don't know <laughs> if the date's ending because you know I'm scared, for, I'm scared and quite excited. So. <laughs> it's a unique experience. 
I know. Right, good night then. What do you mean, good night? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're look, coming up here. <laughs> we also need to, when we're asking me these questions, bear in mind that I am a, a dirty, dirty boy, and like, it's, <laughs> there is a whole different level between I don't want to go out with this woman again, and I'm not willing to sleep with this woman. Those are very, very oh, different standards. That- <laughs> Well, this is something that's came up before on the podcast. You won't be yeah. surprised to know, Robin. And I think that that is a, a distinction between the the sexes, if uh, if I do say so. Not that we we want to be perpetuating these uh, in the current uh, world, but <laughs> of all the ones you've done so far, that's not the bad one, Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the it's and it's very true. It's like you you know. I've said this before, but it would take a lot, it would take quite extreme behaviour um, for me to not, from a female that I was on a date with, to not want to, you know, see where the rest of the evening goes. And I could imagine, I mean, bottling somebody would be a bit of a red flag, I won't lie. But, you know, <laughs> you might, it might at least signal to you, I'm maybe in for an exciting rest of the evening here. I'd be a little worried about that element of it, but like you know, I, I would, I can't say that I'm above this. One girl, right? I got back to her house. She was this Italian goth, and she had like, um, she had a screwdriver. She had like more than one screwdriver poster. So like, they're like a a Nazi punk band, and like, they're not the sort of band where you're like, oh, I just like the tunes, like that. They're very explicit in what they believe and all their It's not like are still that. listening to the Smiths, like Morris yeah. is a bit dodgy these days. Exactly. <laughs> it's not that. It's not a thing where people separate art from artists. The song titles are horrific things. But like, <laughs> she was really fit. And I was... <laughs> so I, what I did was I slept with her really badly, right? Right. Like, I definitely disappointed her. I can promise you that. I'm really and, like, glad I, to hear that. I didn't give the Nazi an orgasm. So That's... I, think, I think what a great man I am. You're a true hero, actually. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm doing my bit. I that, think is we... an official, that is an official strategy of Antifa, actually, is what you should do. Is you, should, you should sleep with fascists. You should just not make them orgasm. Oh, my God. I think there's that thing where it's like up in, I, I don't know, but like up in Scotland, there's this thing of being like, um, don't shag a Tory. And then I've said this to Mark of being like, um, you know, I wouldn't do that. And then Mark is like, well, I know for a fact that you have because I know these people. And I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> fucked it. <laughs> like, I've got a bit of a thing for like posh women as well. Right? So like that is not an option for me. Some of them just have to be Tory. Like, you know, that's, yeah. that's who Tories are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting point though, because it does like when it comes to attraction and, and you know, who you want to have sex with and all this sort of stuff, your morals can go out the window because it's like, you, as you say, Rachel, like you can be like, oh, I'll ne- you know, I'll never kiss a Tory and all this sort of stuff. And then it's like, you meet this old guy or whatever and he's like, yeah, it's actually, uh, yeah, my dad's in the Conservative Party or whatever. And you're like, ah, you know, how how much do you really care when it comes down to it when you're at a bar and you're just, you know, you're I'm wanting committed to... to the cause, am I? Exactly. Benedict Cumberbatch comes in. Oh, no. No, I'm going the wrong Ro- genre. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. I, I Gary think- Barlow. Oh, he no. You two do not know who a sexy man is. We've no, but we know who Tories are. I thought I... <laughs> so so basically we, we think that so Rachel, I, so you would prefer the guy to be the bottler. You think it's more no. as, as much as you don't like it, you, it would be more attractive if the guy at least won the fight. Yeah, but a bottle is a very you've made a choice there when you're picking up a bottle, haven't That's you? True. Like there's no like you, you've just, escalated. Would, yeah. <laughs> I would I would like for the record to say that I would still prefer the person get bottled than be the bottler. And the thing, what I want to know more about that story, because obviously then she says that he had a girlfriend. So did she like, what point did she find that out? Did like she go to the hospital with him or something? And then he's, she's like, oh, do you want, you, know, do you go okay getting home? Yeah, my girlfriend's coming to pick me up. She's like, what? <laughs> like, at what point did she learn that information? Yeah, because like maybe she she his girlfriend was like his next of kin on a form or something. Yeah. Like, because we don't know how badly bottled this guy has been. You know, yeah. he could be like TKO unconscious. Yeah. She gets to the hospital with him. They check his details. His girlfriend comes in. That would be the that would be incredible if it was like at the bedside. They're just both there, like, "Hello." <laughs> he's in a, he's in a coma, and like the girl the, the girl from the date is like, oh, and the girlfriend comes in like, "Who the fuck are you?" He's in a coma with half a San Miguel bottle out the side of his face. 
<laughs> that that's a thing we we've certainly had a lot of submissions over the course of this podcast that are basically guys going on dates when they've got a girlfriend and yeah. stuff like that. Have you have you ever actually had that, Rachel? Have you ever dated somebody like that you found out they've they've had like a boyfriend or been a, a girlfriend or been in a relationship or anything like that? Uh, no, I've had quite a few occasions where I've been at a party where. I've been getting off with someone all night and I always wear red lipstick so if I get off with you it's visible and uh, and I was getting off with this guy and found out the next day that he like lived with his girlfriend and all this so I'm pure texting like mm, he was he was an actor too and he was this and he was that and it's like no he had a girlfriend I've also gone on like nights out with like people and ended up like getting with them and then their friends behaving really weirdly and being like um, like being like, so are you two okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then the guy's like, yeah, yeah, we're fine. And it's obviously like the pals know that they have a girlfriend and they're like trying to remind the guy that he has a girlfriend. So they're like, are you sure you're okay? Like, shall we leave you? Or do you want to come with us actually? And they're like, no, no, we're fine. And I'm like, this wow. is so weird. Like what cock blocking so, behavior. So you've, had, you've actually had guys have their mates come to try and save the guy from you. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like it does sound a lot like that. It I'm does sound like that. They're like, alluring. Leave okay. him alone. <laughs> As you drag him off. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a boys' night out tonight. Okay, if you want to just leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just couldn't, oh, keep my, I couldn't keep my hands to myself with those sexy, sexy boys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it does happen. But like, you don't. Uh, well. I was, I remember this date that I was on once, I was doing a gig, right, and uh, this girl, like, there was a group of girls at the kind of front table near us, and one of the girls gave me her number, and then, so we were texting all that, and um, and we went out on a date, but she, she told me, I think before we went on the date, she told me she had a boyfriend, but she was just kind of, I think she was just, she never really specified, I don't think, like, what the deal was with us going out on a date. So I th- I thought maybe she's just looking for pals. She she didn't live or she wasn't from Glasgow originally. I think she didn't know a lot of people here, and so I was sort of thinking, well, maybe she just wants to make more friends. But I'm willing to. <laughs> oh, sweet to, Mark. I'm willing to see if you know she's if looking she'll for shag someone else. You, yeah. Yeah, basically, right. So we're going. We do a pub quiz, right? And uh, and we're having a couple of drinks and all that. And I'm just trying to sort of suss out what's happening. And the whole night it was just. You know, like it felt it was a date. It was it felt like a date, and we was on the pub quiz and all that. And we walked home. And she was going, I think she maybe no, she never lived with the boyfriend, but she was going home. And we kind of walked. I walked her back to hers, and then I was like, "Right, cool. Well, um, we'll see you later, sort of thing." And and uh, and I was like, "Well, I guess she wasn't here looking for it." And um, and then we just never spoke again after that. Basically, I just realised that so she didn't she even want to pal, be your pal. <laughs> no, but it was so odd because like. She made that. She didn't make that clear at any point of like, you know, maybe if you were really just, you know, you're going on a date with a guy as a pal, you'd be like, oh, do you want me to like try and set you up with somebody or like help you? You drop you know. some sort of hint, surely. I think Absolutely. the hint is that she had a boyfriend. I think that's yeah, the that biggest hint. Yeah, that was quite a big one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but no, it's like you know, the people are poly now. I like, especially like the people that I go out with. Like, there's a lot of like pink hair and nose rings and poly people. So mm-hmm. like, yeah. that happens, you know. Like, but yeah. like I, uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever. I, I did. I was like sleeping with a girl who found out I had a boyfriend. I'm not that on the edge. I don't. I don't, I don't know how hard their boyfriend is, is a worry, you know? If like it's not my responsibility if you're in a relationship, but like I don't need the fucking drama. So you were you worried about someone, your well being. Yeah. You you don't want someone who's got a legitimate reason to want to badly hurt you slash kill you. Exactly, exactly. I just don't need the drama in my life and like I'm not like I've never like done that, I'm not a cheater. Just can't be asked at all with that sort of drama. My my ex was, she loved a bit of it. Fucking horrible. But uh, yeah. yeah, like she she was just really weird as well. Like she'd do stuff like cause she was just um she was a bit looking back, uh, she's a, a mental, right? She's like really like manipulative and weird and like she would do stuff with like just random people that's like really fucked. Like she wants, um, she went on a night out with her mates, and she just arrived back with this like really nerdy guy at the house we lived at. Me and this girl, like yeah. we lived together. And there was just this like guy with her, but he's like a real like, like 
schlubby, dweeby, like, IT support sort of dude. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, she just, like, makes drinks for all of us. And then she's like, right, well, you know, it's been fun. I'm going to go to bed. And I'm like, so I'm just left with this guy in in our living room. And I just go to him, mate. Did she just say to you, do you want to come back with me? And he went, uh-huh. And, I was like, and you were just on a night out and you thought, and he went, uh-huh. And I was like, do you want me to call you a taxi, mate? And he went, uh-huh. It's my birthday. It was Aww. on his birthday. All his mates had left him. And this guy was like, this guy wasn't getting laid a lot. Oh, like, no. you know, it was fucking horrible. But I just had to sit and have a weird little chat with him. God, like, when I tell stories about this relationship to people, like, because obviously if a man goes, my ex was crazy, immediately you're like, all right, mate. But, like, when I start telling stories, people are like, oh, no, fair enough, yeah. That is, <laughs> that is not acceptable behaviour. <laughs> Am I right? So what did you say, what did you say to your girlfriend when the guy left or whatever? Well, like, she was, like, TKO passed out. So I like, had to deal with it the next day. And, like, obviously it's a fucking huge argument. But then, like, um, she was better at arguing than me. And like, oh. yeah, it was just, it was a whole mess, that relationship. I learned a lot from that relationship, <laughs> which tells you it was fucking awful. <laughs> I um, had a, like, I was out with people that I kind of knew. And I went home with a guy and it, it was a, another similar situation of like the guy that we were with was like, are you guys okay? Like, I should probably have learned from that. It was the second time. But uh, but I ended up like staying, uh, he was staying in a hotel and I ended up staying in the hotel with him and like we were kissing and then about halfway in I was like, why was he being so weird? And he was like, oh, um, I have a girlfriend. And I was like in his bed mid kiss and I was like, oh, um... Right. Okay. Well, we should maybe stop this. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah. I'm such an arsehole. We should stop this." And I was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "I'm gonna go." And he's like, "Oh no, it's late, and it's it, you should probably just stay." So I ended up staying, and the and then in the morning having like a three hour conversation about him being like, "I keep cheating on her, and I can't help it, and I know I'm a bad guy." And I was like, "Listen, maybe you just need to talk it through." <laughs> like I was like, that I was being the therapist, and then now I'm like. Why didn't I just leave? Like I was properly like, oh, he's at. He seems like he's very troubled. <laughs> it's amazing the shit you let go sometimes, isn't it? When you look back on it, yeah. Like it's only when you get distance on it, you're just like, oh fuck. And when you're like older and more secure in yourself yeah. as well. So the younger you are, the more you get taken advantage of in relationships, and more like you let things go. Definitely, you gotta learn that shit. When yeah. you only learn what red flags are by fucking having them slapped in your face. It's unfortunate. Like <laughs> that should be on to. a tea towel. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that brings us nicely to our, to our next submission. But this next one, so this next one actually involves uh, someone's ex and a pub quiz actually. So. We'll have a wee listen to this one now. The first date I went on after I'd split up with a guy that I'd been with for like 18 months was the worst ever. I'd met this new guy on Bumble and we decided to go to Sloan's to do the pub quiz because that would be not awkward. So that's all good. We got there, we got a drink, went to sit down in one of the booths and they tend to be shared. So that should have been fine. But when I sat down, I realised that I was sitting straight across from my ex-boyfriend who had cheated on me and broken my heart about three months prior. And just to really complete the humiliation, they beat us at the pub quiz as well. Why did she stay? (laughs) Why did she stay? That's got to be the question, hasn't it? I mean, maybe she was like, I love a pub quiz. I gotta get through it. I gotta win. There's not that another one for two pounds. weeks after this. <laughs> so the rollovers at forty-seven quid. I'm not going home tonight. <laughs> well, do you know actually the pub quiz is a bit of a factor in, in they're not leaving because if you're just at the pub, you would go, "Oh, let's go to let's go to the place next door or whatever." But if you've sat down and you've got the sheet and all that, and then you notice the X, and then leave, it's pretty clear you've left because of them. I'm, I'm, nah, I don't care. I don't care if it's awkward because I'm burning the pound I've spent on the quiz sheet. I'm off. Like I've, I've had, that, I've had that happen to a like much lesser degree. Like there was like a girl I was like seeing, like you know a little bit, like who I'd like called it off with, who'd been like. Mm, 
like a little bit, a uh, little bit persistent, shall we say? After that, was like bombarding me with uh, graphic images that were unwanted, like no. constantly. Hey, look, right? It wasn't. It, like, I've had worse things happen to me. I'll, I'll live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I'd already seen the contents of the images. They weren't surprising to me, right? Yeah. But like, I, I walked. I, I literally, I met um, a girl for a, a date off an app. And like walked into a pub and bang, she's there. This girl who I'm currently like, you know, you need to leave me alone. Oh, no. And I just, I just did a straight one eighty. I just like, I was with this girl. I walked in with. I was like, we need to leave here. Just we just met. We literally went. Oh, hello. Should we go in? I went. We need to leave here. <laughs> and I just, I just spent the walk down the street explaining that you know I didn't give the full color to the story but i explained that my ex was in there and it would yeah. probably be a bit awkward and it was fine you know i think you've just got a front up to that i think if you just go oh that's my ex i don't like them any sane person on a date with you will go oh we'll go next door come on yeah surely rather than going oh well we'll try and beat them at a quiz <laughs> i don't know though because there i i think that is the right thing to do i don't like the idea of someone like I don't like the idea of the ex having the power. So I think that <laughs> I think that I could be like, and I am so sound with you. You don't even, do you know what? I don't even think about you and I can sit near you and I don't even mind. And I just want you to know that it's fine when actually the best thing to do probably would be to just leave. But I don't know. Like, I do think that I used to be that person, especially when I was young, I used to be that person that I would like see someone like an ex and I would just cry in front of them. And it was so embarrassing. <laughs> So now I'm like, look, I don't even care. Like, look at my eyeballs; they're dry. You know. <laughs> see that? See that thing of trying, uh, trying to show them that you don't care. That's the biggest thing that you still do into it. Because I remember, like, um, like years ago, when I spot with this girl, and we used to always still go to this, the local nightclub. So I would see her all the time there, and so you'd be trying to like hang out with your mates or like chat to other girls, and you're always trying to like. You're going. I'm going to show her how great a time I'm having, and you know, <laughs> like, oh, what a yeah. funny joke, Jacob! <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you end up you're acting like you're like an extra in some TV show that's trying to get like on screen, like just going like, <laughs> like over the top the actions and all that. Um, but it's so. But but obviously that's the whole thing. Is like the whole night you're you know you're pretending like you don't care and you're enjoying it, but you're always looking over your shoulder to see if they're looking at you. So, which is the biggest sign, and they can tell that as well. Like you can, like if yeah. if you've ever had them to do that to you, you can always sort of tell when people are are kind of like try to keep clocking Look, you. Too weird so. energy for a date, especially like a first date when you're trying to like impress someone new who doesn't know you, just to introduce that extra en- like energy and that all that baggage of like an old relationship. To be honest, like. Anyone, any one of my exes, bar one, I'm sure they'll, you know, they might be like, he's a bit of a useless prick, but he's nice enough, you know, mm-hmm. like, it's not going to be anything bad apart from, like, one of them where I'd be like, I want her to burn in hell, let's not be near. <laughs> like, so, but apart from that, but even then, even, like, with the nice ones where it's like, we've, you know, it's ended nicely, and, you know, even if we're like, you know, there's the ones that I'll text on their birthday, you know, still. Yeah. Still Aww, on a first day, I'd be that. like, <laughs> I'd be like, owie. <laughs> Yeah, like look, like don't don't get me wrong. That is the exception rather than the rule. But you know, like there's a yeah. couple that you know I'd be like pals with, you know, yeah. to that degree. But there's friends who you you used to go out with are not the same as your other mates. I wouldn't even want to be with my normal mates on a first date. You know, yeah. you want to be one on one, don't you? You don't want anyone seeing you on a date, like you ever. Like, see, when people sign up to these first dates and all that, I'm like, why? It's scary enough as it is. Like, why would you ever want to add that factor of other people watching you be have shite chat? <laughs> There's also that thing as well of like, see, see, especially if it's been somebody like she's saying in that thing of like the person that broke her heart and all that. And then you go out on a first date with somebody, you don't really know them that, that well. And you might turn up and, you know, an hour in, you might go, I'm not really into this person or whatever. But then if you then see somebody that you know, especially an ex, they're then, like, judging who you're with now compared to... They might yeah. just be somebody, like, you might, might just be a wee rebound date just to get back in the game, you know? And then they're like, oh, my God, the, the, is that who they're with now sort that of thing? Is, yeah, that is, that is true. Like, I have just thought that is a very good angle on that because if I was, even if it was with, like, my ex who I hate, if I was with, like... You know, like, if I'm with Jennifer Lawrence, I'm staying and I'm making her watch me do the quiz, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, if I'm with someone that I've just met off Tinder, 
it can be it, you're rolling the dice, aren't you? At that point, you'd yeah. be gutted if it was someone who turned up and they didn't really look like the photos, and you weren't really into them, and it was just a bit like awkward. And then your ex sees you on that date. Fuck, I know, yeah. brutal. Well, I had a really. You know, when I feel like I can be quite unlucky sometimes, and then when I'm lucky, I'm like, oh my God, the gods are shining down on me. What have I done to give the universe such a, a nice thing for me? It's a little win. And I had like a horrible ex who was like really bad times, really like cheated on me, was horrible, manipulative. It was, ba- it was bad, bad times. And I was quite young as well. So obviously you're like, you care even more. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember a boy who I'd gone to school with. I'd gone to school with him. It was like a school thing. So a boy who I'd gone to school with who was really attractive eh, and everyone fancied. And then eh, I'd broken up with the ex-boyfriend and he then asked me out on a date. And I was like, fucking yes. Like, this is great. I'm not heartbroken for this one day. I can just go and have a nice date. And eh, we went to the cinema and the cinema in Glasgow city centre, there was one that basically had, it was like, it's like the tallest cinema in Europe. Um, <laughs> why do you need a, t- just as a sidebar, why do you need a cinema to be tall? Surely that's the yeah. last dimension you need in a cinema. Yeah, it's is, literally. So there's loads of places that have got these like weird hump like brags, like the ABC used to have the biggest disco ball in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> quality not beyond we don't go beyond the continent (laughs) but it was like really so like basically it had like escalator escalator kind of like in a diagonal all the way up so the escalators crossed so like you could see the up and the down and they crossed much like a lot of escalators (laughs) (laughs) i'm familiar with escalators thank you go on do you want me to go back and explain that again yeah, a little bit. So these stairs move, you say. <laughs> it's magic. Um, <laughs> so basically, I'd gone on this date with this guy, and he was really good looking, and we were going up the up escalator to go and see the film. And we were, like, laughing and joking, and he was obviously finding me very funny, you know, naturally. And uh, my ex-boyfriend was going down the down escalator. Bear in mind, like, I had been very, like, I knew... Like, I was very like, I think he's doing this today and I, I don't want to see him and I'd avoid him or blah, blah, blah. So, like, I felt quite aware of places that he would be, but I actually didn't know that he'd be there. But it was the perfect sliding doors moment of just like crossing paths. And I remember like turning around and looking at him in the eye and just like smiling and then being like, <laughs> oh, that's and amazing. Up. That must have felt so good. You, you <laughs> fucked that guy, didn't you, on that date? You're like, fucking. <laughs> You're in a good mood after that. I was That's like, mate, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad you got that moment. That's so cool. It was a real win. <laughs> what you should have said, though, right? See, as you're going up the escalator and he's going down, you should have just turned to him and went, This is a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> so beautiful. Because, like, I, I, like, I proper have that, like, I, you know, where it's like, you know, I haven't um, seen like my ex since we broke up, and like you have that thing and the picture. You know, you want it to be on a good day. If you do run into him, well, we're in separate cities. It's highly unlikely that we would run into each other. But say we did, you want it to be. You know, I don't want it to be like when I'm coming out of lockdown. I want it to be a few months after the gyms have been open for a bit. You know, <laughs> I've had a lot. Of, I actually bumped into one of my exes one time when I was using a coin star. Oh no! Oh, no. Like Man. pouring all the pennies in, That's and you're literally... already hoping nobody sees you. And then I'm like, oh. she's like, "All right, Mark, how you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, great! I have. I've nearly got twenty quid here." Oh <laughs> man, that's like as low as you can get. Like that's like being caught wanking. Like, using a coin. Well, I was, I was doing that at the time as well. I'd <laughs> rather be caught wanking in the co-op than using the coin star. <laughs> Because the coin star says, I'm skint and I can't be asked walking to the bank where they'll give me all of the money. I'm yeah. just going to take the little fucking ticket that I can spend on crisps. It's always a bit of a, a, a it's a bit of a low point in your life when you need to go down with the, the jar of coins to the coin star. It's, it's not the time where you want to be uh, be Mate, judged for where you're where you're at in life now compared to where you were previously. Mate, I've done some coin star big shops in my time. Like I, I know, I'm well aware of... The situation, and yeah, Jesus, man, that is literally the polar opposite of Rachel story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so, see, um, because like, just looking at the other submissions we've got, I think now, now might be a good time to actually 
talk about maybe specific bad dates we've had. I've got one I'll talk about a bit later on, but a bad a bad date that I had f- from years ago actually right, was this is what I done. So I I was about eighteen nineteen at the time. I was very new to to formally dating. I would say right, and um, I went to the cinema uh, to see. I actually right. So I was at this party right. It was someday I was birthday party, and there was I met two different girls at the same party, right? And I ended we up... We had such different teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up taking them both out on a date, right? Oh my God, To why? see the same film. <laughs> why? Have you just only watched 80s sitcoms? Or was that your only marker for how to go on a date? Do you have a little earpiece in with your friend talking you through the date? <laughs> the worst bit of it was... Because it was like the summer, there wasn't a lot of great stuff out, right? And the worst part was it was bloody uh, that... Rubbish Arthur remake with Russell Brand in it, right? That was the day, that was the movie. And, uh, You're the only person who saw that film twice, and I include Russell Brand in that. <laughs> but it's so the thing, the, the worst part of it was, right? So, see, the second time, so the like, I liked the, the girl I took the second time to, uh, like, I liked her better than the girl I took in the first date. Um, and to try and impress her, I started like guessing all oh the things God. that might happen in the film, right? You fucking prick. <laughs> and then, but I got my comeuppance because when we were driving back, like, we drove back to my area, right, and the girl whose birthday party had been drove by us and, like, waved, right? So then, she, but she knew I'd been out with the other girl and then seen the two of us in the car. So they basically ended up finding out that I took them both to see the same film. And then the second girl must have been like, oh, fucking, this guy pretending like he was the plot of fucking oh, Arthur. The pretending <laughs> makes it so much worse. Once she knows that you've already seen it and that you've pretended, you yeah. can maybe get away with it if you're like, look, I'm... Sorry, you know, we went out before. There wasn't much of the cinema. I thought you might like the film. So I just, you know, I thought we'd go see that. I'm sorry if that's a bit weird. But, you know, I like you. You know, But you could get away with that. The fact that you've tried to guess. <laughs> well, show, but you're like, oh, just, yeah. Or maybe he's going to say this. That, yeah, that's that's game over, isn't it? There's no, that's a bottling. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it came from overcompensation because I was trying to... Get this girl. I, I I felt like I liked her a bit too much. Maybe I thought she's a wee bit out of my league, so I thought I'm gonna, you know, yeah, I'm I'm going I'm gonna try and use this wee bit of secret information I've got. That I've already seen the film Arthur Stern and Russell Brand uh, to like you know to try and impress her a wee bit. Oh, he knows a lot about film, so he he must be quite perceptive. And it ended up blowing up my face, so I got what I deserved basically. It looks like that's like your move that you're like. <laughs> This is the only way to make a girl like me is to just like go and do some research beforehand. Also, <laughs> what shite taste in films? Like, see if it was actually a really good film, you could be like, listen, like, it just made sense. Like, why were you like, it, of all the not, films? There was nothing else on. That was like the only but there yeah, would but have like, been Why like... is it impressive that you can guess the plot of Arthur? <laughs> 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 like, you're not like a Fellini <laughs> marathon, are you? You're, you're watching Arthur. <laughs> it's so cultured. Oh. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you were. I assume this date was in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think him and Helen Mirren are going to have a bath together. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I was young. I was just young and stupid, and I, I don't know. I just never. When I, you're I just in, thought when that you're insecure like that, when you when you think you're a bit out of your league, that's when you're most in danger of making a real tit of yourself. That's when you're like when you're like really trying because you're like, oh, come on, don't mess this one up. Like that, you Absolutely. can. Yeah, like I, I do. You, do you want to hear the, the most disappointing, a, a real bad date that I did for someone, right? So like this was when I was, um, I was twenty two. I've just dropped out of uni for the second time, and I've had to move back from London to North Yorkshire to my mum's house. Right, mm-hmm. so I'm living in a small town in North Yorkshire. So like there wasn't a lot going on, but I went out into Harrogate and I met a girl uh, in a club. And, like, she was, like, punky and, like, dead fit. And I was like, ah, oh, there's not many of those around Harrogate. Harrogate <laughs> is Tory Yorkshire. Like, right. there's, you know, in that sort of region of North Yorkshire, it's all just rural. And then there's Harrogate. So it's either, like, country bumpkins or Tories. That's your fucking choice there. <laughs> so it's this girl with, like, a mohawk. And I'm like, fucking, come on, Rob, come on. <laughs> this is the one. Don't mess this up. 
<laughs> so like, um, but like, I, I had no money, like nothing, because I've just like just come home. I'm absolutely flat broke, so I'm like, right, I need to do this on the cheap. So I was like, right, I'll get some. White. Like, I invited her to my mum's house while my mum was out. Basically, my mum had gone out. When I, she, my mum had moved to an, we were, that was it. We were moving house, so the old house was empty, right? But she's in the new house. I so do. I was like, hello. We go to the old house because we we're about to get all the stuff out of that. It was sold, done. So I take her there, but I bought a bottle of wine from the shop, um, but I hadn't checked, and it was a it was a two thirds size bottle of wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was like a it was like a little bit smaller than a normal bottle of wine. I only had that, and then some port that was at my mum's house to share, and then like we played Monopoly drinking Whoa. this. Two thirds size <laughs> bottle of port, and then my mum arrived because the neighbours had called her and said the lights were on at the old house. Oh no! So like my mum walked in as we're like you know like playing Monopoly in her front room, and I was like, "Hello, mum." <laughs> This oh my god that was so brutal. Uh, so I just oh. took her into like the, I took her out the front. We went out the front of the house and like explained what was happening. Mum's like, okay, we'll have a nice night and all this. I had to go back in and just finish a game of Monopoly. Like, <laughs> You'd almost rather have been caught shagging than oh, be fucking playing Monopoly. So much more because then she'd be like, at least my son's got game. <laughs> What did she say? Like, how much of this property do you really own, Rob? <laughs> but like, I, I was like, oh man, just the feeling of that knock on the door and like my mum coming in. It was absolutely brutal. Horrific. I mean, I still did sleep with her. You'll be pleased to know. I'm still, really pleased. You know, Thank God. Yeah, we went out quite a while actually after that. So it was alright in the end. I think it's but quite like, cute though. The, it was the two third bottle of wine that was the worst bit because it just made me look like a fucking cheapo because I just hadn't noticed. I'd picked up the cheapest bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. This guy can't even, he's not even going to bother <laughs> shelling out for a, for a, a whole bottle, bottle of wine. wine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Couldn't even get a whole bottle of wine. You don't need any more than that, right? You're fine with one glass, right? Oh my god, yeah, one small glass, that should be enough. We've got to get the, <laughs> set the mood. But at least you, like, made an effort. Like, you, at least you, like, tried to make a nice home feeling, even though you didn't have one. You were, like, trying to make it I, nice. I did my best on very limited resources. It's just my, my best was really, really crap. <laughs> <laughs> It could have been worse than playing Monopoly. Your mom, uh, it was good to say you were only like, doing like, strip Monopoly or something. Your mum comes in and you're <laughs> stripped no, like, to the waist or some shit. Yeah, like it was. Um, it was definitely in like it was a. Uh, there, there was definitely more of a vibe going on than I needed my mum arriving into. Though it was not like you know it wasn't a situation where it was. I can't remember like the full statement, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty yeah. fucking brutal. I just remember the shame. I just that's all. All I just have the feeling of the overwhelming. How can I make this girl not think I'm lame? And how can I get my mum the fuck out of here? Because the worst <laughs> thing with my mum is she'll come in and be like, start making us fucking drinks and like, you know, want to be her pal and that. Yeah. I don't need that shit. I need her to go back to her house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want a condom? Are you guys sure yeah, you're okay? Yeah, my mum, my mum, my yeah, my mum would try and be cool, mum, about it, and it would be fucking horrific. Like, <laughs> I think, I think your mum is worse than an ex on a date. <laughs> yeah, well, I think my mum would be like, I think my mum would would be like, oh, I'll get out of your way and I'll do this and I'll do this, and then actually probably cause more of a commotion by making it into like more of a dramatic big deal. Than That's an, exactly than what an happened ex. with my mum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, trying... knocking over chairs. <laughs> yeah, I'll just not. I'll just tidy this up for you before I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brutal. Oh, oh, I and I then having that. to be like, do you want to retire to my single bed in my room? <laughs> <laughs> A single bed is offered more often than you'd think, and you're like, really? I feel like I feel like at this point in your life, you should maybe have a double. Like yeah. at least I was a mattress that. on a floor guy for a while, so like <sighs> I can't talk. I'm sorry. I was I was poor, and like the, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to the various women of Manchester who had to endure that mattress. <laughs> that is it. That's actually something we will get to. All uh, right, that's that's going to be coming up actually. And um, before we get to that though, Rachel, so what what's uh, you you had a bad date story? What what was your 
bad day at Stony? Yeah, so this was a long time ago. Like, I maybe was 21 or something. And, um... And yeah, basically he started the date and he was like, uh, he was like, hey, Laura, so nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, no, my name is Rachel. And then I look like an arsehole because it looks like I'm being a bit snippy. And then but I think that could have been fine. But then he was like, oh, God, I really put my foot in it. I really it's like I'm like seeing loads of girls at the same time. It's like I didn't even look at your your tinder and it's like and he was like giving all these reasons why what he done was bad to the point that i actually think that he did it on purpose i think oh, think it's a neg i think it was a neg before we didn't even know what a neg was and i was like <laughs> oh uh, no so then i felt really like strange about it and then his chat was awful so his chat was that he was irish so obviously that was a really good selling point that he was irish it was it was one of the reasons it was like tall irish funny that's kind of that's the kind of golden triangle, isn't it? Like, mwah, chef's kiss. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, so he was chatting about being Irish. And then he was saying that he was like, people think my accent's really sexy. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, girls actually come up to me and say that my accent is so sexy that they're really wet. And I was like, right, okay, um, inappropriate. Ironically, making you incredibly dry. <laughs> <laughs> snap and shut for fuck's sake and then uh, he was like oh have you ever had a zombie so like the really really strong drink that's like seven shots in the one drink and I yeah. was like no I've never had a zombie like a little little naive me and uh, also can I just say they were like 11 pounds from this place and I had no money at this point so he was like let's get zombies and I was like oh um uh right okay so we got like a round of zombies and he was just chatting shit and I was like really not enjoying it but I was thinking right I'll just drink this zombie and it's fine and obviously then I just got absolutely smashed and then he continued to buy round after round of zombies and was like we'll have more we'll have more zombies and all this kind of stuff and I was like right and then at that point I was quite drunk and I was like oh do you know what like you know it's it's fine like actually his chat is better than I thought it was obviously because I was getting some more and more steaming and then he was like cool and then at the end they brought the check out and they were like so that's 85 pounds and he was like so should we just half it and I was like I don't have and it was so embarrassing because I was like I was like oh yeah yeah of course yeah of course we can half it so I'm like forking over half of that whatever that would be and I don't even do the maths but uh, (laughs) 82 pounds 50 £42.50. £42.50. And I handed that over and I was like, I was going on nights out at this time of my life. I was honestly spending maybe about a tenner and that was including like a taxi and shots. And yeah. You just make it work. And I was like, and then I, we ended the date and I was just like, I'm so sad because I had a really shit time and he had bad chat and I'm like £42.50 down. And I was just sad about it for like a week. Yeah, welcome to dating as a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. At least you would choose. That's, that's the, not what dates have been like for me in the modern era. I just, I just couldn't resist the old, fa- the old seventies comedian <laughs> joke that was presented to me. There, you know, I feel like I should have had a frilly shirt on with that one. Yeah, rough paying, isn't it? So that brings us to the end of episode 10 about bad dates. However, part two of our bad dates episode will be available next week as episode 11. As you can imagine, we had quite a lot of things to say about bad dates. Um, So we've got another couple of submissions and plenty more stories from myself, Rachel and Rob in next week's episode, which is part two of the bad dates episode and we wanted to fit it on we, we did we had quite a lot to say so we didn't want to cut anything out and cut it down an hour just for one episode um and get rid of you know a lot of stuff that we thought was quite funny or interesting stories or and certainly the submissions as well which have all been been great um in the meantime if you have enjoyed this episode please do remember to give a five star review on apple Podcasts or whatever lets you leave a review you can subscribe to us on whichever podcast and platform you're listening to and there's a youtube there's a video version available on youtube as well and remember you can also follow rob uh, at rob mcholland on his youtube which he's doing really well at or any his other social media apps and if you'd like to slide into our dms then you can get us on instagram at debating dating if you'd like to send us any submissions you can send us a wee voice note or you can get us on our email address which is at debating dating pod at gmail.com 
So thanks very much, much for listening. And remember to tune in next week for part two. Bye.